you said that you're both feeling the AGI. <laughs> so you're what's what's your timeline? Dario's 2026 for the super powerful AI that's you know that's basically agentic to a degree where it's a real security threat. <laughs> that level of AGI. What's your what's your timeline? I don't like to attribute specific abilities because predicting specific abilities and when is very hard. I think mostly if you're going to say that I'm feeling the AGI is that I expect continued rapid surprising progress over the next few years. So something like R1 is less surprising to me from DeepSeek because I, I expect there to be new paradigms where substantial progress can be made. I think DeepSeek R1 is so unsettling because we're kind of on this path with, with ChatGPT. It's like, it's getting better, it's getting better, it's getting better. And then we have a new direction for for changing the models and we took one step like this and we like took a step up so it looks like a really fast dope slope and then we're going to just take more steps so like it's just really unsettling when you have these big steps and i expect that to keep happening i see I'm tr i've tried open ai operator i've tried claude computer use they're not there yet i understand the idea but it's just so hard to predict what is the breakthrough that'll make something like that work and I think it's more likely that we have breakthroughs that work and things that we don't know what they're going to do. So like everyone wants agents. Dario has a very eloquent way of describing this. And I just think that it's like, there's going to be more than that. So like just expect these things to come. I'm going to have to try to pin you down to a date on the AGI timeline. Uh, <laughs> like the nuclear weapon moment. So moment where on the geopolitical stage, there's a real like, you know, because we're talking about export controls. When do you think, just even to throw out a date, when do you think that would be? Like for me, it's probably after 2030. So I'm not as- That's what I would say. So, so define that, right? Because to me, it kind of almost has already happened, right? You look at elections in India and Pakistan, people get AI voice calls and think they're talking to the politician, right? The AI diffusion rules, which was enacted in the last couple of weeks of the Biden admin and looks like the Trump admin will keep and potentially even strengthen, limit- cloud computing and gpu sales to countries that are not even related to china it's like this is portugal this is, and all these like normal company countries are on the yeah, you need like, approval from the u.s list like yeah portugal and like you know like like all these countries that are allies yeah. right singapore right like they they freaking have f-35s and we don't let them buy gpus mm -hmm. like this is this to me is already to the scale of like you know well that just means that uh the u.s military is really nervous about this new technology that doesn't mean the technology is already there so like they might be just very cautious about this thing that they don't quite understand but that's a really good point sort of the the robocalls swarms of semi-intelligent bots could be a weapon could be doing a lot of social engineering. I mean, there's tons of talk about, you know, from the 2016 elections, like Cambridge Analytica and all this stuff, Russian influence. I, I mean, every country in the world is pushing stuff onto the internet and has narratives they want, right? Like that's the, every, every like technically competent, whether it's Russia, China, US, Israel, et cetera, right? You know, people are pushing viewpoints onto the internet en masse and language models crash the cost of like very intelligent sounding language. There's some research that shows that the distribution is actually the limiting factor. So language models haven't yet made misinformation particularly like change the equation there. The internet is still ongoing. I think there's a blog AI snake oil and some of my friends at Princeton that write on this stuff. So there is research. It's like it's a default that everyone assumes. And I would have thought the same thing is that misinformation is going to get far worse with language models. I think in terms of internet posts and things that people have been measuring, it hasn't been a exponential increase or something extremely measurable. And things you're talking about with like voice calls and stuff like that, it could be in modalities that are harder to measure. So it's it's, it's something that it's too soon to tell in terms of, I think that's like political instability via the web is very, it's, it's monitored by a lot of researchers to see what's happening. I think that you're asking about like the AGI thing. I, my if, if you make me give a year, I'm going to be like, okay, I have AI CEOs saying this. They've been saying two years for a while. Mm -hmm. I think that they're people like Dario at Anthropic, the CEO, had thought about this so deeply. I need to take their words seriously, but also understand that they have different, different <laughs> incentives. So I would be like, add a few years to that, which is how you get something similar to 2030 or a little after 2030. Uh, I think to some extent we have capabilities that hit a certain point where any one person could say, oh, okay, if I can le leverage those capabilities for X amount of time, 
this is AGI, right? Call it 27, 28. But then the cost of actually operating that capability yeah, this is, is going to be my so, <laughs> so extreme that no one can actually deploy it at scale and mass to actually completely revolutionize the economy on a click on a snap of a finger. So I don't think it will be like a snap yeah, of the finger it's moment. A physical constraint. Timeline. Rather, it'll be a, you know, oh, the capabilities are here, but I can't deploy it everywhere. Right. And so one one simple example going back sort of to 2023 was when, uh, you know, Bing with GPT-4 came out and everyone was freaking out about search, right? <laughs> oh Perplexity came out. If you did the cost on like, hey, implementing GPT-3 into every Google search, it was like, oh, okay, this is just like physically impossible to implement, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and as we step forward to like going back to the test time compute thing, right? A query for, you know, you ask ChatGPT a question, it costs cents, right? For their most capable model of chat, right? To get a query back. To solve an Arc AGI problem though, cost five to 20 bucks, right? And this is, this is an- a, It's only going know, up from there. This is a thousand, 10,000 X factor difference in cost to respond to a query versus cr do a task. And the task of Arc AGI, it's not like it's like, it's, it's simple to some extent, um, you know, but it's also like, what are the tasks that we want? AG okay, AGI, quote unquote, what we have today can do Arc AGI. Three years from now, it can do much more complicated problems, but the cost is going to be measured in thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars of GPU time, and there just won't be enough power, yeah. GPUs, infrastructure to operate this and therefore shift everything in the world on the snap of the finger. But at that moment, who gets to control and point the AGI at a task? And so this was in Dario's post that he's like, hey, China can effectively and more quickly than us point their AGI at military tasks. Right. And they have been in many ways faster at adopting certain new technologies into into their military. Right. Especially with regards to drones. Right. Uh, the U.S. maybe has a longstanding, you know, large air sort of, you know, fighter jet type of thing, bombers. But when it comes to asymmetric arms such as drones, they've they've completely leapfrogged the U.S. and the West. And the, the fear that Dario is sort of uh, pointing out there, I think, is that. Yeah, great. We'll have AGI in the commercial sector. Uh, the U.S. military won't be able to implement it super fast. Chinese military could, and they could direct all their resources to implementing it in the military, and therefore solving, you know, military logistics or solving some some other aspect of like disinformation for targeted certain set of people, so that they can flip a country's politics or something like that. That is actually like catastrophic. Versus, you know, the U.S. just wants to, you know, because it'll be more capitalistically allocated just mm -hmm. towards whatever is the highest return on income, which might be like building, you know, factories better or whatever. So everything I've seen, uh, people's intuition seems to fail on robotics. So you have this kind of general optimism. I've seen this on self-driving cars. People think it's much easier problem than it is. S similar with drones. Here, I understand it a little bit less, but I've just seen the reality of the war in Ukraine and the usage of drones on both sides. And it seems that humans still far outperform any any fully autonomous systems. AI is an assistant, but humans drive. FPV drones where the humans controlling most of it just far, far, far outperforms AI systems. So I think it's not obvious to me that we're going to have swarms of autonomous robots anytime soon in the military context. Maybe the the fastest I can imagine is 2030, which is why I said 2030 for the super powerful AI. Whenever you have large scale swarms of robots doing military actions, that's when the world just starts to look different to me. So that's the thing I'm really worried about. But there could be cyber war, cyber war type of technologies that uh, from social engineering to actually just swarms of robots that find attack vectors in our code bases and shut down power grids, that kind of stuff. And it could be one of those things like on any given weekend or something, power goes out, nobody knows why, and the world changes forever. Just power going out for two days in all of the United States, that will lead to murder, to chaos.